ghouls and goblins. Welcome back to By Book and Bone. This week's video is a twofer, so we have two supernatural stories up for review. A graphic novel, Beetle and the Hollow Bones, and a YA novel, The Afterlife of the Party. One of them is very good, and uh, unfortunately one of them is very bad. Both of these reviews might have very minor spoilers, particularly the one I didn't like, but I'll steer clear of any major spoilers. So without further ado, Beetle and the Hollow Bones by Eliza Lane. What is it? Beetle and the Hollow Bones is a supernatural graphic novel that goes hard on the cottage core goblin core mix. It's suitable for anyone uh, from about nine and up, middle grade if you're American. The general premise is that an apprentice witch is trying to save her ghost friend. The mall that they haunt is about to be demolished and they can't leave. The characters. Our protagonist is a 12-year-old goblin witch uh, called Beetle, who lives with and is homeschooled by her gran, a very powerful witch and the head of the local council. Beetle's best friend is BG, or Blob Ghost, uh, a mute but very, but very expressive orange blob who lives in the mall. Uh, the mall is about to be torn down by our villain. Cat Hollowbone is the undead friend of Beetle's, uh, who is back in town. She went to a very prestigious magic school and is now apprenticed to her equally undead Aunt Marla, who just happens to be our main villain. Though you could argue that several of the characters aren't particularly deep, uh, they're so charming that it, it really doesn't matter. Um, plus, I mean, for a graphic novel, there's only so much that can be done when it's not serialised. And I think Eliza Lane made uh, the absolute most of her characters. Uh, Gran is my favourite, by the way. The adorable but badass elderly goblin witch is a character type I did not know I needed. The artwork. The artwork is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I love this style and the colour palette. I love when the artwork of a graphic novel and the story are completely intertwined. Colour is like a really important component of a graphic novel for me. Uh, I just, I really love like either it could be matching or juxtaposition in colour but like really good colour work will always like I'll beeline for it um, a great graphic novel can still be very good in black and white or in more muted colours but I feel a lot of graphic novels suffer because their colour scheme doesn't add to the scenes Beetle and the Hollow Bones does a great job uh, in using the colour to aid in setting the emotion for a scene. Like, it's not the be-all and end-all. It's still a good story with good illustra illustrations, even if there was no colour. But the colour is very much an important part of the graphic novel. The story. Built in the Hollow Bones is a pretty straightforward story. Uh, Blob Ghost haunts the mall, Aunt Marla wants to knock down the mall in a week. She doesn't care who might get hurt because she's obsessed with her family standing and, you know, returning to what they once were. Uh, Beetle must figure out a way to save BG and Cat tries to help at times. Beetle is really insecure in her magic because she and wider society believe that goblin magic is weak and it's nothing like the sorcery that she sees on her favourite TV shows uh, and what everybody would again would see. Um, Kat then wants to live up to her aunt's expectations and believes her to be a cold but caring person so she follows like the more mainstream sorcery style like the ones seen on TV and this, so this is like the and then she went away to magic school so that's why Beetle is so insecure um, she, uh, Kat ends up leaving more and more herself behind even as she tries to help Beetle and BG she tries to um, line up to her aunt's expectations more and more The Verdict. This is absolutely a five-star read. This graphic novel is worth picking up on the vibe alone. So the fact that there's like these wonderful characters and a solid story makes it a must-read. I didn't go into the world too much, but the panel artwork has so much going on that you get a real glimpse into more than is just a story. It really feels like this vibrant world full of creatures living their own lives that, you know, intersect but aren't actually in the story. Um, it's definitely one of those ones that you'll reread and see something um, that you didn't see the first time. The Afterlife of the Party by Marlene Perez. What is it? The Afterlife of the Party uh, is a paranormal urban fantasy romance book. 
it's not really sold as a romance. It was meant to be more action adventure, but the romance is so so in your face that the rest of the book kind of might as well not happen. Yeah, you guessed it. This is the book that I did not like. The characters. Uh, the characters were inconsistent, I think is the nicest way I can put it. There's quite a few, uh, and I think we're meant to have a sort of good guy team versus the bad guy team vibe, but most of them were so paper thin that the only thing distinguishing the vampire battling girls were their names. Like, like it's, they might as well just have been one character, to be honest. Uh, Tansy's our main character, and she's like super special and powerful, but she doesn't know it. And all the guy characters are into her, but she's only into one of them. You know, I sometimes, and I like, I know everybody compa- complains about Mary Sue's, but I think sometimes when they're done right, it can be done really, really well. Uh, because, you know, fantasy fulfillment is fine. But in this case, no. <laughs> uh, our main character guy, our main guy, like a bad guy, um, who I, ca- I can't for the life of me remember his name. I think it begins with T. Uh, whatever, I'll just call him main vampire guy. Uh, anyway, he just loves how the the way Tansy smells, even though he's dating like 20 women and girls. He just wants her. Uh, Tansy has a human love interest, and he's sweet and supportive, to be fair to him, but I just can't remember his name either. I think it began with S. Their romance is so botched that it's really hard to get invested uh, so, and Skylar, who I do remember the name of, is Tansy's best friend. And I only remember her name because it seems to be on like every page at least twice. She's awful. I think we're meant to sympathize with her. Um, and I think she's only being this horrible because of the influence of the vampire. Uh, but because of the beginning is so short that the normal status quo is not established and we're told what seems like a hundred times that she had a bad breakup and she's acting weird but like we don't see this as weird this is just how she is to the reader and as I said like the beginning is so short that you know you're, you're by the end of it you're like oh just leave her there the story on the face of it, uh, the story is Tansy and her guy friend traveling across the country to save Skylar from the thrall of a vampire rock band. They have several adventures along the way and a romance. Sounds inoffensive enough. Uh, and the story itself wouldn't be too bad if it wasn't for the writing. The awful, barely edited writing. It's not so much that there's plot holes. I mean, there might be. I couldn't keep my attention well enough to tell. But there's so many obvious continuity errors that it makes it really difficult to understand the space in which the scenes are playing out. One major one, uh, I think this is the one that made me realise that this would not be a two or three star read, was in a scene where Tansy has been captured. And in the beginning of the scene, she's like, oh, she's hanging up from the ceiling. And I think it's unclear if it's uh, upside down by her wrists or by her ankles but then like two sentences later she's actually tied to a chair in the middle of the room and she escapes from that but there it's not like two different scenes or she's not fading in and out of consciousness it's just that somebody didn't catch that in editing and it's just like well which is it like is she hanging from the ceiling or is she sitting in the chair uh, this informs the reader and how her next movements likely went when she's escaping uh, and like this is just an example of several times where it's talking about like the fighting that they're doing and all that but it just you can't there's no grounding they might as well just be floating around in space just f- like flinging their arms around you don't actually know like any grounded information and I mentioned before Skylar seems like a terrible person but we're meant to care well I think that as I mentioned like I think the reason for this is that the status quo section of the book is so short before the inciting incident so we have to find out that Tansy's a witch that her gran is a witch she has a crush on her, crush on her friend who just broke up with his girlfriend and then Skylar was also broken up with some time ago and hasn't been the same since and they're on the way to the party and we find that all out in the car on the way there so we have no idea who anybody is and we just get all that information dumped on us And then we just have to accept, you know, oh, no, it's actually they're acting weird. It's like, okay, but, you know, I don't know that. Um, And the writing has this sort of, and then they did this, and then they did that, and then, and then uh, the Vampire King was there. Like, it's just frustrating to read. 
even in the fun quirky sections like sugary soda being poisonous to vampires can't be enjoyed because like they can't be enjoyed for what they are um because of like this constant terrible writing like i went into this wanting it to be just it didn't need to be like this amazing story but the storyline is so patchwork and kind of nonsensical plus with this kind of really poor writing it just it's a big headache the verdict it should be silly fun but the afterlife party is so frustrating to read with few redeeming qualities i genuinely do not recommend this to anyone i just don't i don't think anybody would really like it like you know i like kind of silly vampire books or like you know romances or supernatural romances like they don't have to be you know groundbreaking to be fun like they can be good three or four star read with you know but this is just this isn't the case of that it's just frustrating and confusing in parts and ugh. in conclusion do read Beetle at the Hollow Bones and uh, don't read Afterlife of the Party. <laughs> uh, in all honesty, though, I'm not going to tell you what to do. If you can overlook uh, bad editing, you might uh, like Afterlife of the Party. It does have silly moments that could be fun. Uh, maybe borrow it from a library, though. Uh, have any of you already read either of these books? Did I get it spot on? Or do you th think I missed the forest for the trees? Be sure to let me know below. And if you want to see more from me, please consider subscribing. I have some interesting videos in the pipeline, so I'd love if you were around for them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.